big smile. Yeah, we, we don't know where they were at, do we, brother? Woo! Faith was rising, wasn't it? Something inside you was starting to believe. God is who He said He is. He can do what He said He could do. I'm going to do more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I think I'm just going to swing out over hell on a corn stalk and spit in the devil's eye this morning. Woo! How you do it? <laughs> I want you to take the day off, devil. I'm tired of you messing with my business. I'm here to spit in your eye. You ain't going to see what I'm doing the rest of the day. How you like me now? Amen. I'm relieving you of your duties for the rest of the day. I am victorious in Christ Jesus. From victory to victory, from faith to faith. He didn't say from want to be to I think I can. You're not a choo-choo train. You're a faith machine. You, it's not I think I can. I think I can. You're never going to. I'm glad you think you can, but you're going to have to know to get into the I know I can. It's those that expect the great things of God that move into the other side. Those with a great expectation that claim the victory of God. Come on. You ain't a choo-choo train. It's nice. It's a nice story to tell your kids. But those that expect. Come on. Those that expect. Man, I know my God is who He said He is. My God can do what He said He could do. You know, He said you can have more than enough. I don't know what that was, but it needs to be shut off from Jesus. <laughs> Did God call you just to get by? No. Then why do we just expect to get just enough? If you got just enough, you can't share with nobody else. And God told you to take care of your neighbors and those around you. He told you to sing, show so into the kingdom of God. He showed, he showed, he said, "You've robbed me in tithes and offerings." He wants you to have more than enough. Now listen, I know we haven't taken the offering and I hate talking about money. If you don't know me that well, just hang around. I promise you'll figure it out. And it ain't about money, but I, you need to start. <laughs> we need to get our expectations. How did this old hillbilly used to say that our... Man, you guys are good. <laughs> I've, done, I've done hillbilly eyes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never be the same. You'll try to run away from broken chains. You'll get to the place and say, You've been healed, be honest. <laughs> Who ruined you? <laughs> you say, I just didn't receive nothing this morning. He didn't preach an hillbilly. <laughs> I wish I was joking, but you know, when God calls you to a certain place, He just gives you ears for that place. Amen. It's truth, really. I'm all joking aside. But when you get your expector connected to your believer, something happens. Amen. But guess what else you got to do? You got to get your expector that's connected to your believer, connected to your mouthpiece. Come on. If your miracle's in your mouth this morning and faith is arising, as we heard, listen, that, I hope you were listening because I wasn't just a prayer. God, I believe God was speaking prophetically through me earlier. Did y'all receive that? Did something jump in your spirit this morning? Did something say, man, I think I'm going to latch hold of that crazy faith. <laughs> I think I'm going to go ahead and just go on in. God is who He said He is. He can do what He said He can do. If you don't believe it, listen... I hate talking about myself for the record, and if you know me very well, you know that. But you know what? You don't want me talking about your business up here, so the person I got left is mine. Amen. <laughs> I don't think anybody, wants, you know, we're a pretty small church. If I start talking about this one brother or sister, it ain't going to take you too long to figure it out. I had this one brother stop by the other day. <laughs> when it was a larger church I pastored in, I could get by with that. <laughs> Everybody still tried to figure out who it was. When did, was you here that day? Well, who come by? Y'all a bunch of heathens. <laughs> uh, 
Where was I? I was going somewhere. Get your instructor I, to your mouth. To your mouth. <laughs> yeah. You got to get your inspector connected to your believer, to your mouth. Amen. Amen. God has got great things in store for you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he really does. You know, and you can always believe the enemy. His story never changes. But God is always the one with promise. And He is more than able. More than able. You know, my God has never failed me when I've lined up with the Word of God. Now, there were some times when I didn't want to line up with it and I didn't want to take ownership of that many years ago. And guess what? I tied His hands. True story. But that didn't mean he wasn't faithful. That didn't mean he wasn't able. So don't tie his hands this morning. Release faith. Open your mouth this morning. Your miracles in your mouth. If you need something from God this morning, go ahead and declare. I'm not anywhere near 100% yet with my back, but guess what I'm getting? It don't take a, I believe it don't take a rock. I mean, I'm resisting a little bit this morning, but I've been jumping around like a crazy man. <laughs> hey, anybody <laughs> notice I'm a little better than what I was two months ago? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody noticing as I obey what God told me to do that I'm getting better, even though everybody, the doctor said it wouldn't help? Yeah. Which, by the way, I remember what I, I was talking about myself, which I didn't want to talk about. <laughs> I'm down another six pounds. Thank you for <laughs> praying. For those that don't know, I'm trading pounds for missions. I started in, I'm ashamed to say, at 420 pounds. I'm down to 376. That's 44 pounds since December 5th. I know some of you have lost more. You started before, but that's from December 5th till now. That is less than two, less than two and a half months. That's two, that's two months and a, and a week. Amen. I've lost 44 pounds. Amen. And uh, you know, it's amazing. People have sowed in all over the world and are still continuing to sow into that. And that got so good because only God can do something like that. Amen. So thank you for your prayers and your continued support. Keep praying with me. Amen. The devil would like to keep me tied to a, a chair somewhere because he thinks I can't reach that many people there. But I got news for him I got a mouth and I will travel. <laughs> Amen. And you know what? I said this a few Sundays ago, and some of you picked up on it. Some of you didn't. So I'm going to say it one more time. Everybody got their listening ears on? How many? Listen, I, I know I say this, but I have a reason why I say things like how many know, Pastor? That means I'm telling you, I know I joke a lot. I'm telling you I'm not joking even though I'm smiling. <laughs> you with me? I'm going to be taking some people into some serious places across the world on some missions. And some of you have been wanting to go and you always think it's impossible. I'm telling you, God's going to make a way for you to go. But if you don't get your body ready, you're not going to be able to go. So I'm looking at you, kid. <laughs> I'm serious. Get ready. Get ready to go. Now, some of you are already wrestling. I think he's talking about me, but he can't be talking about me. Da 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 da. Just get ready. Okay. How many would? And let me just tell you a little something. Missions is missions work isn't always what you think it is. You, do you, man, the Holy Spirit? Do you know how many people? Like, let's just take our media ministry for now. We got all these crazy lights and all the stuff. I threaten to cut off people's fingers for. Every <laughs> but uh, 
we reach a crazy amount of people. We're like on TV and apps and all kinds of stuff. I mean, like, we're talking like 4,000 every time we turn this crazy switch on. Is that crazy or what, people? But do you know what? You all pay your tithes. You're faithful to the house. And there takes off. It's like a whole flock of people that are behind the scenes that are not up here at this pulpit that it takes to make that happen. Do y'all know that? People have to be faithful in order for that to happen. Do you know when you go on missions, you may not preach, but it takes a whole flock of people to reach all those. And you may be thinking, well, I'm no preacher. Why is he taking me? Well, you know what? God may have something that only you can do. Or he may be training you for something great. <coughs> But it'd take a whole team to reach the number. Listen, God gave me a number for the souls that we're supposed to reach out of this house. If I told you, it would scare you more than it scared me, I think, right now. But it's going to take all of us to do that. So, you know, and do you know what the Ministry of Helps? How many of you remember me uh, teaching on the Ministry of Helps in our leadership class? Anybody? It's not a less than office. It's the same office as a pastor, a preacher, an apostle, a prophet. It's just a different type of ministry. But without the ministry of helps, how many of you know the ministry doesn't function? Amen. 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 So, and, I, and if you've been around pastor very long, I don't never treat it less than. Amen. Amen. It's not a less than calling. It just has a different anointing. So, y'all might want to get ready. Because nothing more is heartbreaking than missing your opportunity. Okay? And when the opportunity comes, you'll start to tell the Holy Spirit, well, if I'd have known, I'd have got ready. He'll say, remember, Pastor Bryant even spent... Two Sundays on it, that one he wanted this big long detail about getting ready. Amen. Amen. Now, if you get healthy just to go on an admission trip, you're probably not going to maintain that long enough to actually go. But if you get healthy just to be healthy, there's a difference. And you don't have to be a model to go on a mission trip. You just have to be able to hike mountains. Because there's no telling where you're going to end up at a missions trip. You can't call ahead and say, you know, we're not going with Billy Graham. We're not going to fly in and fly out. You know, we're going to walk in and walk out. <laughs> you're going with Pastor Brian, and I don't ever know where I'm going to go half the time until I get over there. I know I got my, I got all the scheduled places. They tell me I'm going to this village or that town or this town. They just don't tell me how I have to get there half the time. <laughs> you know, walking. Walking, walking, up the mountain, down the mountain, around the mountain, through the swamp, through the deserts. Some places even drive, and I've seen four-wheel drive pass that were better. They get beat from one side to the other. <laughs> Flying. How many's ever flown in here? It's grueling on your body for a 12 and 16 hour, sometimes 24, 36 hour flight. You're stuck in a little bitty place, your knees are in your chest and you're cramped there and you can't move. There's no movement in your body. If you're not healthy, your body starts shutting things down. I'm talking to some people this morning. I don't, are y'all starting to get a picture? Yeah. You've always wanted to go, right? But, uh, just start praying and believing. It's going to be a phenomenal time. Can you all imagine what it will be like? Being used, <laughs> seeing people saved, set free, delivered, healed, right in front of your eyes, tumors falling off, blind eyes being opened. These are things I've seen every time I went. A deaf being healed. No exaggeration. I've seen it every single time. And you'll get a little culture shock. You probably eat some things that you'll be thinking how great America food is. You'll stop complaining. And the Bible says to eat what's set in front of you, so don't be 
when we say, you know, when some, especially people, these people, I don't know how I know this, I guess it's, I know I ain't little, you know, these people that they just went and killed the only thing they had for their whole family, that would maybe even like the chicken that's rough and tough and just tastes like shula, it don't even look like chicken, but it was all their family had for producing eggs, and the eggs is what they ate, it's all their whole family had, and they just killed it just so you would have something to eat. So how dare you insult them and push it away? It'll forever change your life, but don't drink the water. It'll change your life too. <laughs> yeah. And if you get over by Uganda, do not get in Lake Victoria. It has some it has some uh, parasites in there that will kill you. That's in South America. That's those crazy ice cream with the seeds that will kill you. They leave in there. That's another story. Anyway, so this morning, Sister Becky, will you come and <laughs> give us our offering teaching, share a little bit what's on your heart. And children, we are going next door in just a few minutes, but just uh, just bear with us. Amen? Yep. Glory to God. Amen. Our, and I love you all. So, hey, and you know what? I'm going to share this since I went ahead and just, I think I've got everybody this morning. You know what, Pastor? I like hate talking about the whole weight thing and all that stuff because Bible, I got no problem teaching and all those things, but I'm like, man, what if I fall off the wagon? They're all looking at me. <laughs> That's going to be a mess. Lord, why are you making me talk about all this? <laughs> I don't even want to do it myself. And he said, well, because I'm trying to get you all ready. And I, I'm not for the rest, I have to say this because poor Sister Bonnie and the Holy Spirit had me pick, her up, pick on her. And, and I'm not saying anything about that other than God was telling her to get ready and she wasn't past the age of going. That was the gist of what I was saying. Earlier. Amen. And he was saying, I'm talking to you too, daughter. Amen. Hello. When I got word that I was going to have to share <laughs> um, something that uh, that kind of stuck with me is um, is that that we are the light. We are the light to the world, and um, uh, just kind of kind of go quickly here. But uh, this this will probably the last couple of weeks. Um, and I don't know how your Facebook feed is, but my, I, I can hardly look at Facebook anymore. I mean, I really contemplated just closing it up, and that's it. And it is just so negative and, and just awful. And, and, you know, and it's awful in politics, which we're not going to go there. But, you know, somebody's offended over something ridiculous, and, you know, and, and because I wore pink on Tuesday, you know, it, it's just, it's that crazy. And, you know, and then there's stuff on, um, you know, just, just the hatefulness that people have done to other people. And, and it's just I, it's just getting to where I, I just can't handle it and take it. And, and it affects me. You know, you read that stuff and, and it, it affects you. And, um, but, uh, but, you know, and then you turn on the news and it's just, it's awful, you know, and we've learned we can't trust most of the news because it's they've already got an agenda and, and things like that and and then the things that they report makes people want to just go bury in a bunker for years with their <laughs> their stock of food and, and stuff and, and and then you know when you talk to like your co-workers or whatever you know everybody's just kind of they're caught up in all the drama of the world they're caught up in, in just the things that are that are going on in, in, in the United States and everywhere else, and, and there's a lot of fear out there. There's a lot of uncertainty, and there's just, just a lot of, of um, just people are just really unsure. They don't know where to turn. They don't <clears throat> know what to do. And, um, you know, and so that's where we come in as Christians. You know, the light is in us. God is, when we accept Jesus into our heart, you know, Jesus is a light, and that is that is put in us. And it is our responsibility to share that light. 
And, um, you know, and, and when that, that stuff and that darkness comes around and the fear and all that, we can say, hey, we don't have to, you don't have to live that way. You don't have to live in that fear and, and, and all of that. And, um, and if you turn to, to John 8, chapter 8, verse 12. And I'll, I'm just going to read it. Just um, It says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in the darkness, but shall have the light of life. So, you know, in this this verse, again, is saying that Jesus is the light. And, and like I said earlier, we, we accept him into our hearts and accept him into our lives and make him Lord of our life. We walk in his light, and his light is in us. And, and um, um, you know, and so we don't have to fear the darkness. We don't have to fear, uh, you know, the things that, that the world fears and, you know, and all that. We know that, that God's got our back. And, um, and again, another uh, verse on that is John 16, 33, and it says, These things I have spoken unto you, that you might have, have peace. In the world you will have trouble, but have good cheer. I have overcome the world. So again, that's just another example that, that you know, we're, we're not to walk in fear. We're not to walk in, 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 um, in all this, this darkness that the world's walking in, that, that, you know, we've got God with us, and he's overcome the world. And um, I was talking with somebody yesterday, um, and I was talking about, you know, how I feel about Facebook, and I was really contemplating on <coughs> shutting my page down, and, and, um, and of course she went towards politics, and and I said, yeah, you know, and, and, um, and she said that it's, it's a scary world now. And I said, oh, no, that doesn't worry me. That doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. <laughs> she kind of just gave me just this weird look. And, and I said, you know, no, you know I've, I've got the peace of God. You know, that, that doesn't, doesn't bother, bother me at all. And, um, you know, because I don't put my trust in a man. I don't put my trust in... in um, Things like that. I put my trust in God and in the Lord, and and that is how I can walk in peace. And uh, uh, and you know, and no matter what comes at you, you know, we we're all walking through something, you know, and and you can walk through it and smile, lift your head every day, get out of bed every day, because you put your trust in God, and and you know, and you have you have that peace, and um, and then. Uh, I want to point out in Isaiah 12, 2, it says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength, he's my song, and he also becomes my salvation. So again, just another example of, of where, you know, we don't need to be afraid. We just put our, our trust in in, um, in God. And, you know, and when you're with the co-workers or you're just out in the grocery store and somebody just kind of, you know, just rattles off, you know about things that are that are going on in the world you know we don't want to engage in those conversations and enable them and like you know oh yeah you know i'm shaking in my boots too you know and I'm, I'm sitting at home and i agree you know no we tell them you know what's inside of us the hope that we have and and the peace that we have we have the answers to that that's that's you know I think a lot of times we're afraid to to share that just because of what the other person might say. But but you know, I mean, the world's looking for something to put their hope in. They're they're looking for something not to be afraid in, something that'll take that fear away. And we have that as Christians. And um, um, you know, and and, uh, and we have Jesus, which is is the light. And we need to share that with with every single person we meet, meet with our coworkers, with our family members, with. Um, you know anybody you know that that we meet, and um, and and I I I found myself kind of getting caught up in that you know especially at work and and, um, and and I have to like nope you know not gonna go there I'm you know I'm gonna share what I believe and where my peace comes from, and um, <clears throat> and in Ephesians five eight it says, for ye were sometimes in darkness but now are the light in the Lord walk as children of the light. So walk in the authority that you have. Share that that hope that you have. You know, walk in that. And um, you know, and, and some you know, another uh, a verse that you can share with them is uh, Romans eight thirty one. It says, "What shall we say to these things? 
if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. You know, so if, if God's with us, who cares what's going on? What you know, He's going to take care of His kids. And um, um, sorry, I lost track of my notes here. Um, you know, and, and, um, and we want to, you know, you want to share with them that, that God can give you, give them peace during uh, troubled times. And, um, you know, and when you do that, when you share that light, it kind of changes the way, you know, they, they look at things. And, you know, it kind of, it'll paint just a whole new picture for them, and an encouraging picture, and, you know, and a life-changing picture. And um, I want to share something with you, and I hope she don't get upset for me sharing it, but um, a couple nights when I took Sister Joyce home, uh, she goes and she goes up to, to unlock her door, and it's dark, and she can't see, so she has a hard time getting her key in there, you know, and, and um, you know, and she gets nervous, a little frustrated, and, and, and just kind of the way the shadows are, she's... And, and I can see because I'm behind her, you know, and I can kind of see that she's completely missing the, the little, the keyhole thing. And, um, but, but so where she was at, there was darkness, so she couldn't see right. And she couldn't, you know, get things lined up because it, because it was dark. And then once we just kind of shift just a little bit, there's the light and she can see the keyhole. And that's how it is when we share with others. You know, we share that light. We share that that peace and things like that. You know, I mean, she was looking just, just her view from where she was at, it was dark. But when that shifted, when, when you know, the light came in, she could see, she's inside, she's warm, it's great. Um, and, uh, um, and, you know, and God commands us to, to share the light with others. In Matthew 5, 15 and 16, it says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And if it giveth light unto all that are in the house, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And you know that little song, you know, this little light of mine? I won't sing it because I'm not Sister Bonnie and I can't sing. But, <laughs> but um, you know, uh, and, and it's a... It's a um, it's a kid's song, but it's a powerful song. You know, God's given us that light. You know, we don't want to hide it. We don't want to want to um, blow it out or thank you <laughs> or or uh, shadow it. You know, you want it so everyone can see. And and just that little bit of light starts taking out the darkness. We all remember, you know, the examples Pastor Brian's given us with just the one candle with the lights out, and and just just that one little light started taking out the darkness and then you know this person's light shine this person's light shine and so and again that's encouragement sharing the light sharing the message sharing jesus and the peace you know this it starts over here and that takes out a little bit of darkness starts over here you know and then you know god's peace is going going everywhere and um in second corinthians 4 6 says for god who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. In the, I think that's face of Jesus. I can't read my own writing. I'm sorry. Um, so, so what I want to, you know, the, the point I'm trying to get across is, you know, um, when the darkness is all around us, you know, and, and especially right now, you know, it, people are, are afraid. They're, they're, you know, there's uncertainty. But, but we have that uncertain certainty, and so instead of just kind of going right along and yeah I don't know how things are going to turn out I don't we'll see you know no no we we have that peace we yeah. have that light and we need to share that with them you know and and give them you know the gift that, that God gave us amen amen, amen. didn't she do an excellent job this morning amen. for the first time I'm Daddy buttons are popping proud. You know, doing good. Awesome word. Amen. Well, has anybody ever been to a round robin before? Well, you all are not from the hills. <laughs> a round robin is where you have more than one speaker during a time to make up the whole hour's worth of service. And so... You have two more speakers today. I'm about to exit the building. And so you have two more. And then you come over. Well, it's already noon. 
But uh, we're going to have two more. We're going to take the kids next door. They get about 15 minutes each. Y'all heard that right? And then y'all can come next door and hang out with us. Y'all can, y'all can stay another 30 minutes, right? Kids, you go ahead and start moving. You don't want 30 minutes next door? Okay. So, we're going to finish out our Red Robin. I'm going to head next door. Our Round Robin, not Red Robin. I think that's got food on it. Are you with me? I don't even have my truck, brother. Can I ride with you? It's, a, it's not even here today. So, uh, But you two young ladies, go ahead and come on up here this morning. Both of you. And, uh, so we have Sister, the, the, the most honorable Reverend Deborah Allen, and the most honorable Reverend Heather Hall. And uh, they're going to finish up our round robin this morning. And they've got 15 minutes each. And I want you all to give them your undivided attention and shout them down. Amen. So uh, without further ado, uh, Sister Heather, you're up first. Ready, set, go. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> All right, the title I have is Preparing You for Purpose. And we're going to go quickly to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. And it says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So God was showing me that he already chose us even before he even founded the world before he formed it before he even put it together he already knew us uh, he already had us predestined for the destination that he wants us to be in each generation um, and then it says that we should be holy and without blame before him in love so we are to be holy as he is holy the word says that in first Peter chapter 1 verse 13 through 16 and it says and also if we go to first Peter, Chapter 1, verse 15. <clears throat> it says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation. So there again, he's already called us. So he's chosen us for such a time as this. And so he's looking for a bride without spot or wrinkle. Okay, and if we'll go quickly to Revelation chapter 19. Um, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So there again, we are his bride, and we're to make ourselves ready. So like when you get married to your spouse or whatever, you get ready, you do counseling, you do all these things to get ready for the marriage. We're supposed to prepare ourselves for what he has for us for eternal, like how we're doing eternity, that um, Driven by Eternity series. So, um, okay, if you go to Esther chapter 2, Esther chapter 2, verse 3, it says, And let the king appoint officers in all the province of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan, the palace, to the house of the women, unto the custody of Haggai, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their things for purification be given them. So they had to go through a process of purification. They had to get themselves ready in order to see the king. And verse 12 talks about that a little bit further. Um, they had to go through it for a whole year. Six months of oil and myrrh, 
and six months with uh, like this beautiful odor stuff. And they had to be prepared for a whole year before they could see the king. And so that spoke to me where we had to be prepared ourselves in order to see our heavenly king. So, God is also preparing us as a church for what he has in store for us. Like how Pastor talked this morning, you know, for missions or whatever, for the vision of the house. But he's also preparing us individually for the things that he wants us to do, you know, for our destiny to reach the destiny that he has for us. And we'll quickly go to Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 5. It says, Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So he already predestined us, he adopted us, and we are bought at a price. And God knew that we would fall. He already knew that, and he already had a backup plan prepared for us. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, you know, as that backup plan. And uh, I believe it's First Peter. Verse 1, 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So he was already foreordained. He was already he already knew that he was going to come for us. It was already prepared. He had a backup plan for us because he knew we were going to we were going to fall. But we just got to ask God while we're going through this time of preparation for Him to open the eyes of our understanding. And we'll quickly go to one of our last verses here, Luke 24. Luke 24:45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So as God's preparing you, as God's working on your heart, as God's saying, hey, son or daughter, I need you to work on these things so I can use you later in this. You just have to ask God, okay, God, open the eyes of understanding to your word, to what you want me to do, and, you know, um, what, he want, what you want me to change in my life. And the last verse is 1 Peter 1. says, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit into unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. So in order for us to be pure, we have to, act, we have to purify our, our souls in obeying the Word of God. Didn't she do a great job? I'm not going to turn me down, Sister Heather. No, you did too, man. Praise God. Glory. As God um, continues to prepare us, we have to be willing to allow Him to prepare us. We have to have a willing heart to allow Him to do the things in us to kind of spin off a sister Heather so that He can shine His light through us. If we don't allow Him to do that, then it's hard for Him to shine that bright light through us. But in doing that, there's something I believe that's vital, and I've been saying it a lot this past week. Um, some of you know that I'm, I'm working out and I'm going to the gym. And doing so, in, in, in working out, some people progress different than others. Just like in our Christian walk, even though we're gaining the same thing, sometimes we progress just a little bit different because some people grasp some things faster than others and you have to work towards that. Well, in my workout, there was some people that was losing five pounds a week or, or whatever it may be. Some people may lose pounds, but some people may lose inches. 
and I was looking at the pounds and I could have got discouraged. But then when I saw the inches, it's like, wow. It was different. But the title of my message is, Don't Give Up, You Can Do It. So in other words, I've said that if I had given up, I wouldn't have been where I am today throughout the walk. In our preparation and in shining the light through us, there's going to be things that's going to come in our life that's going to try to cause us to stumble. Whatever that may be. There was a time not too long ago that I went through a lot of health issues. And if I would have told you that I'd been walking today, I don't know that back then if I would have totally agreed. Even though I was progressing, but it just seemed like things kept happening and delaying my process. You know, and I had got to where I wasn't even walking with a cane and then the day of my mother's funeral, I twisted the, my knee again and I was carry, or I was using the cane and this very special person in my life, and in yours too, as he came up to talk to me, he said, what are you doing with that? I said, I t told him the scenario. He says, I'm surprised to see you with it. Did you know that I walked out of that funeral home and I took that cane and I laid it in my van and I never picked it up again? I can't even tell you where it is today. He's taught me how to persist. Many times in our life we are faced with some things that we don't know or how we can do it or get through it. There's some things that we just think, man, this is it. Is there really a tomorrow? What am I going to do? In this we may become tired and weary. And want to give up. There's been a time I've been there. I don't know about y'all. I can only talk about me. But in that we have to be willing. We have to be dedicated. And we have to be persistent. Just like my workout. I had to be willing to step forward. And be willing to go to that gym. And start. I had to be dedicated for six days a week. Have I missed some days? Absolutely. But I'm still persistent in going. I'm dedicated in going. And we have to be persistent. What are you willing to do? Are you willing to do as Matthew 18, 18 says? It says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. We have to be willing to move forward. No matter what has happened or what we're facing, yes, there will be a different emotions, but we have to be willing to move forward forward what are you willing to do are you willing to speak to that life and death is a power in our tongue we can either speak blessings and the promises of God or we can speak other things that we're not going to be willing to move forward but we have to be willing to move forward when we begin to move forward, we begin to be dedicated and realize, as Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. The more you become dedicated in Christ, the more you become dedicated in moving forward. When you choose to make something a priority in your life, you will become persistent in achieving just as Philippians 1 6 says be confident 
of the very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So many times we are waiting for God to move. Oh, well, you know, I really need that job. Oh, God, God will God'll take care of it. He, he will bring that job for it. Did you put an application in? <laughs> Just saying. God can't move until we move first. God can't move until we choose to move forward. He's waiting for us to make that step. We're waiting for God to move when in reality He's waiting for us to move, which brings us to having faith in believing and receiving strength. This is to water into what we've sown. Being willing, dedicated, and persistent is what we're sowing not only into our life, but into other lives. Because I was willing and dedicated to go to Jim, God's been using me, and I'm sure that he's using others to speak to people, not to give up, that you can do it. Don't let it discourage you. Don't let it break you down. God tells us in Isaiah 41.10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help the, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God is telling us not to give up. That we can do it. That we are overcomers. He tells us in Galatians 6, 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. If we faint not, he's telling us not to give up. He's telling us he will give us the strength that we need. But we have to keep our faith and believe he will take care of us. That he is there with us. Which brings us to Mark 10.27. And Jesus looking upon them said, With men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. For God all are possible. When I choose to be willing to, dedicated and persistent, when I choose to believe, to have faith and receive the strength in going to the gym, I have begun to be in the receiving. Receiving the blessings, the harvest, the fruit. When we stay in God, when we pursue God, when we stay in His Word, when we speak His Word, it will guide us each and every day. The Bible is our instruction manual. It's our driver's manual for our life. And because God has showed me how to work out, it had been seven years since I'd been able to work out. But God... Now I'm doing things that I couldn't do a year and a half ago. And some of you know because you had to help me walk in and out. You had to help me walk different places because I couldn't do it. Sometimes I had, pe had to have people drive me places, but you know what? But God, why? Because I became willing. I became dedicated. I became persistent. I allowed my faith to arise. I believed in what he would do. I believed in his promises. I believed in his word. And you can too. In reaping, or in receiving blessings and harvest in your food, fruit, is to reap what he, what we have sown. 
1 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. When we do this, we will begin to see the blessings. In our walk, in each and every one of these things, Pastor spoke on it a little bit last week. Everything that we're doing right now in our everyday life is preparing us for one specific destination. And it's our choice what that destination is going to be. We choose in our life whether we're going to go to hell or whether we're going to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. Amen. I want to be able to stand before the Lord and say, well done, my faithful servant. In Revelations 21, Actually, the whole chapter goes with this, but I'm going to read verses 23 through 27. It says, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall be in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or make a lie, but they that which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Where are you today? Where are you really at? Are you giving up? Don't give up. Let me introduce you to Jesus Christ best friend that you can have. Oh, I could be a best friend, but I'm going to fail you. I'm going to fall off that pedestal. I may not answer a call when you call me. I may not have the right answers that you want. I may not be able to do what you want to do when you want to do it. I may offend you. I may upset you, but Jesus, his line is always open. He loves you unconditionally. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you've been, but he is concerned. Where are you going? If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today, I invite you to come to accept Him. If you feel that you've fallen short, we're here. Come and make it right with Him because He's what matters. He can take your life and He can turn it around and He's willing to shine that light through you wherever you're at. But you have to have faith. You have to believe. You have to be willing to step forward. You have to dedicate your life to Him, not to the world, to Him. So many times we get so caught up in being in the world, but we're not of the world. We're in it, but we're not of it. 